Peace and security in this dark world can be hard to find. But those who anticipate the day of the Lord and already live in the light of the risen Christ have faith, hope and love as a strong defence against all that seeks to destroy them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Rejoicing in the glorious diversity of humanity, we come together to pray, to worship, and to give glory to God, who has given each one of us some special talent perfectly designed to help us accomplish God's purposes. Today, we are reminded in the Gospel that we are trusted by God to do something with our lives and not just to waste them. Each one of us has been given gifts and talents to use. At the heart of today's parable is being clear that we are all asked and entrusted with doing different things. The focus is not on making more money, but using the talents we have. Gathering today, let us thank God for the talents we have. Let us also rejoice in the knowledge that we all have something to offer as we hear God's word and celebrate Christ with us. Let us pray for the ability to offer what we can to Christ, knowing that he will accept all that we offer for the building of his kingdom. So let us pray together. We, we gather, gather here at the end of one week and the beginning of another. O Lord of decades and days, centuries and seconds, we stop now for this moment and turn together to you, who holds all time in your hand. Make us ready to receive you. Enable and empower us to offer all that we can for the, for the building, building of, of your kingdom, kingdom in, in this, this place. place. Amen. Let us pause for a moment and acknowledge before God the times when we have not recognised and used the gifts we have been given, and also the times when we have failed to be Christ-like in our loving and giving. Lord, you call us to a life of mercy, justice and humility, but we do not always live like this. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to a life of love and open-heartedness, but we do not always welcome or love without condition. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to a life of solidarity, but we do not always offer a helping hand when it is needed. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to appreciate all that we have. But we do not always recognise the gifts you have given to us. Lord, Lord have mercy. You call us to rejoice in the diversity and variety of creation. But we do not always value that which is different or new. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to be optimistic and hopeful but we do not always embrace the opportunities you give to us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Have mercy, mercy on, on us, O oh God, for the, for the times, times we have failed, and, and for the, the times, times we have, have failed, failed to care, care. for the, the opportunities, opportunities we have missed. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so we pray together, where, Where there, there is, is a table, table you, you are, are always ready, ready to make room. Where, Where there, there is, is a home, home you, you are always ready to welcome. welcome. Where, Where there is a thirst, you, you are always ready to quench. Where, Where there, there is, is hunger, hunger, you are always ready to share. O oh God, God, who breaks bread for all, and who broke, broke your body to show us the way, we, we praise, praise you for your unending readiness, readiness to, to welcome. welcome. Amen. 
the collect for this, the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a challenging message from the prophet. We must listen to God, trust him and repent of our sins. We are to discern God's will for our lives. The day of judgment is coming. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord, on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading, St. Paul offers us a string of metaphors highlighting our need to stay attentive to the Lord and his return. He also says that we should encourage one another. A reading from the St. Paul's first letter to the, to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Then they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let, uh, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whenever we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another, and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 
Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slave and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to the, his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicky, wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to one with the ten talents, for to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even when they have, when they will be, will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <coughs> this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you, O Christ. Last year, I was sent a present from an old friend and colleague who has recently written a book about John Henry Newman. And Christopher, my husband, and I used to do quite a few lectures for this particular person, and he sent us a present of his book when it was published. John Henry Newman, who was a former Anglican cleric and controversial leader of the 19th century Oxford movement, subsequently Catholic priest, then bishop and then cardinal, and more recently saint, was a giant of an intellect and a prolific writer. In his meditations and devotions, he coined what had become possibly his most famous quote, God has created me to do him some definite service. I never may know it in this life but I be, shall be told in the next. Now this was written in 1848, and it's a wonderfully evocative notion capturing the heart of his meditation on God as creator. Newman realized that each of us has been uniquely created by God, each given some special work, some specific mission or task to complete, which nobody ever shares. 
down the ages, people have grappled with the question, why are we here and what's it all about? In the absence of obvious answers, which set our existence in some sort of context, it's easy to fall prey to despondency. What use am I to the world? What contribution can I make? If we don't, upon examination, see within ourselves any special talent or ability, it's just so easy to believe that we've no purpose. And our society, arguably, has far too many people who believe that they're insignificant or second class. Now, despite the reference to weeping and gnashing of teeth at the end, today's reading from Matthew's Gospel does have a positive message for us all, particularly those of us prone to existential crises. The master in Jesus' parable gives to each of his slaves a different responsibility during his absence. Each is given a challenge that the master deems suitable for them. It's a responsibility to which, in the master's estimation, they're all equal. And once he has departed, it's up to each of them to figure out what they must do. What might the master expect of me? They're supposed to think, what opportunities are open for me to do some good with the gifts that I've been given? As we know, some of the servants are more successful than others at fulfilling these obligations. So should we feel sorry for the servant who gets it wrong and hides his one talent in the ground to keep it safe? Perhaps so, but it rather misses the point. It's not the master's wrath that ought to preoccupy us, but the attitude of the servant in the first place. Does he follow the good example of the others around him? Is he inspired by their actions to greater ambitions for himself? Does he use the time he's been given to discern what might be required of him and put himself to productive work? God gives each of us unique talents. We are, as the theologian Michael Lloyd argues, each one of us, self-portraits of God. Each of us reflects a unique aspect of our Creator, one which has never been seen before and will never be repeated. Each of us is therefore infinitely precious and once we depart this earth, it'll, it will be for ever be deprived of that singular image of God and bereft of the unique gifts and talents that God has given to us and us alone. Let's hope we've put them to good use when our time comes. The definite service that Newman referred to has not been revealed to him. It's rather for him to discern throughout his life. Prayerfully, each of us are to determine what task God would have us accomplish and how God would have us participate alongside him in this great work of creation. Do I have a significance on this earth? Am I not a bit anonymous in this sea of talents of people I see around me, far cleverer than I am? Whoever you are, God gives you a unique task for which you and only you are perfectly suited. God has given you the gifts and talents to fulfill it. Rather than feeling anonymous, what you do with them has eternal significance. We were created for this purpose alone, to do God's will, and our challenge is to discern it. That's what Newman's approach, somehow I am necessary, he concluded in his meditation. He has not created me for naught. And so following those thoughts, we stand to proclaim our faith. I ask you to join with me as we profess our faith together. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, creator, creator of, of heaven and, and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have given us all talents and abilities. You have created each of us in a unique way, that we may give our own unique service and talents to you. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we give you thanks for all you have given us. May we share our talents and use them to the benefit of others and for your glory. We pray today for all those who tell others of your love and proclaim the gospel. Hear us as we are before you, someone who we would like to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with. Lord, give us the words to say. Help us to be bold and sure in the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, giver of all that is good, hear us and help us. Lord, giver of all good things, we ask your blessings on our artists, musicians, craftspeople, gardeners, architects, politicians, and all who are unable to use their talents to the full. Thank you, Lord, for the talents you have given to each one of us. Lord, giver of all that is good. Hear us and help us. Lord, giver of all good gifts, bless us and all our loved ones. We pray that all homes may be in a place where talent is fostered and given the chance to grow. We ask you to bless all schools and places of learning and all who support others in developing new skills. Lord, giver of all that is good. Hear us and help us. Lord, giver of all good gifts, bless those who are thwarted in their ability through illness, oppression, or the lack of opportunity. We pray for all who are struggling, especially as a result of coronavirus. We remember and pray for all who are ill at this time. Lord, giver of all that is good. Hear us and help us. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. We rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints and ask your blessings on our loved ones. Depart, departed, that they may be at home with you in your kingdom of love. Lord, giver of all that is good, Hear us and help us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we prepare to receive the Lord's peace and to share it with those we love and know. As we think about receiving Christ's peace, let us pause and ask the question, what do you carry with you? Take time to ponder for a moment what's in your pockets, your purse or your bag. What do these things tell us? about what we're ready for. Perhaps 
you have some medicine that will help alleviate pain or a charger to help keep your phone available or breath fresheners or a pen or paper or what might we carry with us in our pockets or in our hearts that will keep us ready for being the Jesus wants us to be here and now this week what do you carry in your heart mind and soul that will equip you for your work as a disciple this week so as we think about all those things let us pray for all we need as we say together God, God of readiness, readiness you, you are always ready to show care, love, hope and peace to all who need support and help. Give us readiness, equip us with the things we need from you, so that when we see someone who is alone, afraid, lost, we can be quick to stand with them and for them as you do to help, to help love, love and serve, and serve as, as you, you do. do. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now returned on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, 
we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke it the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of God, St Thomas a Becket, St. Michael and all angels, and all your saints, to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and in Christ and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus calls us to build the kingdom of God with him, let us pray for the advancement of the kingdom, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, they will live forever. Lord, give us this bread always.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. May the Father, who is the creator and author of life, guide you to discern God's will for your life. May the Son, who lived alongside us, encourage us on our journey. May the Holy Spirit prompt us to meet the challenges set before us, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Eucharist is ended. Our service must now begin. Let us all go in the peace and to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.